Today, folks, is Tech Friday. Yay! Welcome once again. Today, we're going over Windows accessibility, A to multi stream, setting up a YouTube, YouTube stream, and streamer bot chat window. Okay, four things today. Yeah. When you're setting up Windows accessibility, you go to, you click the settings cog. This is Windows 11, and you go down to accessibility, and you have all these options. And there's one I, I want to show off, but I do want to show you all the options. So let's get into demo window. Here they are. All right. So you have text size. They can change that. Visual effects, scroll bar, transparency, mouse pointer and touch. So you can change the size of the mouse pointer, color, size, your text cursor. And what we're talking about, what I'm doing right now, the magnifier, because I really like this magnifier. You can set up a similar thing if you have a Mac. Their accessibility options will allow you to change your magnifier to do exactly what mine is doing right now. And you have color filters, color blindness filters, grayscale, inverted, contrast themes, and you can get some narration there. Hearing option, options, captions, audio, speech stuff, keyboard, filter, toggle keys, on-screen keyboard, mouse, and eye control, eye tracker, text-to-speech. But today, we're going to focus on the magnifier to do the exact effect I am doing right now. They so click the little arrow here. Boop. And you got to turn on the magnifier. They so can do it. Window keys, the plus sign, turn on the magnifier, press the Windows load key. Or you can set up, uh, you know, the hot key on your stream deck. So you just have a button to press. And when you do that, you get this menu popped up right here, a little magnifier, so I can change some of the options here. You know, setting more settings, play magnifier, right? So that comes up, lets you know it's active. And here you can do your zoom level. Again, there's a Windows hotkey for that. And your zoom increment, I just leave it on default. I think 200 works right now. And then here's the important part to get this, view. And they gotta change the view to lens. So click here. And then you can change your view to docked, full screen, lens. I have it currently on lens. And then you can change the size of the lens with scroll bars, horizontal and vertical. And you can get this handy effect, which I really like. This is replacing the mouse zoom I was doing because I did get feedback that even at the most smooth settings I could make it. It still was causing motion sickness. So when I do demos, I'm going to turn on the magnifying glass and use that to highlight things. I think that would be useful. All right. So that was topic one. Yay us. Ada Multistream is the way to multi-stream. There's a period. That's it. There's no buts or anything. If you want to multi-stream to things, go to, go to the ATOM site or the OBS site and get the ATOM multi-stream solution. It's currently the best thing for multi-streaming. And what I've done is I've undocked it from my OBS so I can show it off. So it's in another window completely. If you didn't know, everything that's a dock in OBS, you can drag it out of the OBS window and put it on another monitor if you don't want to see it in your normal OBS. So it, for dem for the purposes of this demo, it's not in my OBS. It's over on my other monitor. And we'll take a look at it. Boop. Just like this. Okay. So here it is. Ada Multistream. Get your built-in stream, which is what... Your built-in stream is whatever you set in your base settings in OBS. When you go to OBS, you hit settings. This is always going to be what the built-in stream is, whatever you tell OBS to go to. Highly encourage you make this one Twitch because it allows you to do a couple other things, and we'll get into that in just a moment. And this needs to run first. So you set up your built-in stream, always needs to run first. You click the button, you're streaming, all right? And then you can see I have my YouTube horizontal up, and I click that button. So click this first, and then because these two things currently have a relationship with each other, you got to click your built-in first, 
and then the one below it, and now you're streaming on YouTube as well. Yay. And as you can see, I have a YouTube vertical. I haven't done much with right yet. And to set this up, well, you, you hit the settings icon. And now I got to drag a window over. Here's the window. So main canvas, as you can see, it tells you about main canvas here, your built-in stream. And it tells you, you know, to change in your built-in output settings, you need to do this from within the normal OBS settings, what we just talked about. And then for this YouTube horizontal, I hit add output, and then you choose your output. So if you want another service, you can add it in. So I, I've named it YouTube horizontal, right? Output settings, you set here, get your YouTube stream key, and they have a thing. Please enter your stream key. You can find this on your YouTube creator dashboard. And they have a link right to your YouTube creator dashboard. We'll be showing that off in a moment. And you know, you set this up, give it your stream key. You have a vertical canvas, set it here, save the output. I've already done that. And you know, so that's your output settings, right? Then your advanced settings, video right here. If you set your video encoder to main encoder, that will take whatever you put in as your built-in stream and copy those exact options over to whatever service. So my Twitch stream and my YouTube stream have the exact same encoder settings right now. I can change this. However, go here and you see I have a bunch of options. I could do the NVAC H264, I could do AV1, you know, whatever your graphic card and machine lets you do. They'll be listed there. So I just have main encoder because right now I want the same video encoder index, just keeping it all the same. You can change that there as well. Now this is reading the uh, enhanced broadcasting settings on Twitch. So if I wanted to send the 720p signal to YouTube based on my main encoder settings, I could. Or if I wanted to send the 480, the 360, or the 160 to YouTube, I could. But right now, we're just matching it up. And another thing why you'd want Twitch to be up here is in your audio settings. Because now you can say, hey, uh, you can select your audio encoder, but you can also select what audio track you want to go because OBS allows you six audio tracks to choose from. And so if you don't want your music going over to your YouTube VOD, you could select the same, the same track. So normally my VOD track for Twitch, so the music doesn't get saved to the VOD is track two. If I want the same thing to happen for YouTube, I can select track two, and now I have a separate audio, the same audio mixes going to both, both places on when you watch these in the future. And then I can remove if I want to, but I can set the audio bit rate. Set your audio bit rates to 320, just do the thing. Audio encoder, and yeah, you are, you click OK, and you're done. If you need help, there's this handy help feature here. Otherwise, built-in stream, always click that on first because you have to. Uh, if you have your, if you, if these two settings, if you make these two things talk to each other, you have to have the built-in stream on first, and then you can do the, then you can click on the second one. And doing this, clicking this, turns on your streaming, and if you have it set up, your recording or your replay buffer all in OBS. This, this handles all those settings. This goes, okay, this is your output for. OBS and so one you have it set up to start streaming. Okay, so I'll activate the start streaming button Okay, you also want to record the video to your hard drive. So I'll start the re video recording Oh, you have it set for your replay buffer is on all right I'll start that too because that's what you want when I click start streaming and the Ada multi stream button turns all of that on as if you were doing a regular OBS uh, broadcast or recording. Oh, there you go. That is Ada Multistream YouTube. So that option to go to your YouTube settings in the Ada Multistream doc takes you to a page that looks something like this. And so you can create different stream keys by clicking the arrow here. So I have this 
default stream key. And then I have one for my vertical selection. I can't select them now because I'm streaming to this. And then, so here's the stream key. When something asks for a stream key, copy it, paste it. And then you choose the URL you need, whether it's this one or the backup server URL. These are the same for everybody. If your thing needs one of those, all those, I mean, you'll at least need the stream key. And then sometimes you'll need to put in the stream URL. If you want closed captions, like my setting is on, your stream latency for YouTube, you got to set to normal. I know it might be probably hard to see right now because, again, this is what I'm streaming with. And it's right here. So, yeah, this has to be normal. And then you can use the auto captions like I do. My stream, let me get rid of the magnifier window there. And then for every, you, you have those set up. You don't have to touch those again. But what I do, I go over here, edit, and then all the details. Every time I stream to YouTube, I change the title. I add, I change the description. As you can see, this is what today's stream will be labeled. You know, I, I have this here. Some of this will save automatically. And you don't have to type it in every single time. Some of it doesn't. Uh, let's see here. Get rid of that for a moment. And then as you scroll down, you know, how do you want to go live? Streaming software, visibility, category. I usually put uh, Tech Fridays into education. Thumbnail. I usually try to create a thumbnail in Canva. And then this is where you upload it to. Uh, what playlist you want it to. Do any of the following describe your content? This is an important button. Make a real person appear to say or do something they didn't do. Alters footage. Generates realistic. So, no. <laughs> None of that applies. <laughs> Automatic chapter markers. I usually leave off. Just because I, I make my own chapter markers. and Automatic chapter markers and key moments can get a little weird sometimes. Uh, you, can, you can turn these off too. Allow automatic places. Allow automatic concepts. Because you don't, you don't know what they're doing. Where where they're putting your video. Then your tags. Language. I always select the recording date. Uh, I haven't found a way to make this automated. So every day I stream. Monday through Friday. I'm filling this out. I'm creating a new, a new thumbnail. For here. I'm changing the description. I'm changing the title. I'm making sure my tags are right for that day. I'm selecting the record date. And then I also usually select Creative Commons. You can do standard YouTube license or Creative Commons attribution. I'm low embedding. And then, you know, show how many viewers like the screen, all that. And then you, you click the Save button, and you're all set. Then when you click the Start Streaming button in either the Ada Multistream or whatever you're using to stream to YouTube, uh, it will come up. Oh, one, one more thing. When you start to stream, and you've probably seen my tweets that go out. Again, I'm doing this Monday through Friday. I am always providing the direct link to this video on YouTube. And I don't know what an automated way of doing it. I could automate it so that it just goes to YouTube.com. Or my YouTube. So YouTube.com slash at DC Lasserre. And then you have to click the live video and go to the live video but i'd rather just take you to the live video so i click this little arrow key right over here where it says share click this i can share to a platform whatever i like to have a longer message so i don't like to just share the link to x or twitter and do the thing i will copy this link and then paste it into my uh, Twitter message. And usually I get rid of this question mark feature equals share. It's just extra fluff. I'm not sure how that helps me. But uh, so I get rid of that. And then I just have this URL. And then I copy that message to Blue Sky and to a couple discords. And everything's the same. Again, this is my process Monday through Friday. The, this is why I'm part of what I do before stream. So I can stream to Twitch and YouTube. You know, plus setting up the the Twitch title and tags uh, every day as well. Now, I do have a, if you're wondering about vertical 
streaming on YouTube. I have a video on that. Uh, I'm not going to go back through that here. I don't do it very often because it's kind of a pain to do. And it involves multiple steps that I would have to do every day. And I just don't want to do them every day. Uh, <laughs> and there's not really a way to automate the things. You have to have these set up. And you got to click a thing. And you have to schedule another stream. And it, it, there's, a lot, there's just a lot more steps. So I'm kind of like, eh, nah, let's, let's not. I'm, I'm going to try to be a little better about that if I have the time because I should be broadcasting to the vertical stream, but maybe when the Twitch vertical stream comes up, I'll, that'll be easier to handle uh, because it seems like I'm already doing a lot for a stream and then I have to do a lot more. And I, I'm wondering if the time is actually worth it. Probably is. I don't know. Anyway, let's go back. Okay, so that is what you need to do to set up a YouTube stream. Next topic, DreamerBot chat. Yay! Let's dig into it because there was a change from last week. I saw this on Wednesday. I think that's when it was posted about as well. The so boop. Here's a streamer bot chat. That's what I use to see all of you lovely people chat at me on Twitch and YouTube. As you can see, and we'll use the big magnifying glass for that. Boop. Uh, so both both chats or all all of your chats, no matter what you stream to, you can as long as you say, "Hey, streamer bot," I I connect it to this chat. You have Twitch, YouTube. And your event feed, so when someone subscribes or when it or sends bits, it appears in the event feed. But what I said last week was that you couldn't type exclamation mark and your command and have your streamer bot command appear in the streamer bot chat. That is no longer true. You now can do that. In fact, there's a couple ways to do this. You can set up these actions here. So I click this button. I've set up down here. Boop. It gives me the website. Or I can now go into chat and just type an exclamation mark. And up comes all of the commands that I have. Even if they're, you know, whatever group they're in. So these are ungrouped. They're just in my regular commands thing. And you can see over on the other side the related command. So I can type in exclamation mark DC. And again, you get my website. And we'll go over that in a moment. Uh, if you want to set these buttons up, so I just have buttons I can hit, or, you know, here's my Doris affiliate link. Here's the pop message that I use to annoy one urban bohemian. And here's my time just displays the, the time zone in my... Oh, that should be EDT right now. Uh, I'll, I'll fix that later. As you can see, the little blue icons, I can toggle on and off, but I'm on Twitch, YouTube. Again, I can send to all, or I can send to selected, so I can toggle off YouTube, and it would just send to Twitch. And I can filter the events that I want to see, go to settings, and then those buttons I just showed off in the bottom left are quick actions, and they are under global quick actions. And you just add a quick action, Title it whatever you want. You can give it an icon. Tell it what the command is. You can go to this website here and get the command code. So this, the lightning bolt outline for my exclamation mark DC command is MDI colon lightning dash bolt dash outline. Right? I can color the command button, order where it is in the list, collapse it so it's in a drop down. Set arguments, all right? And then you can do uh, message quick actions and user quick actions, which I went over last week. That's where you set those up. Now, in order to make sure that your chat commands come up, there is another step. And for that, we need StreamerBot itself. Hey, look, it's StreamerBot. Yay! Just increase size here. So you have your commands. Now here's all the commands that you just saw. That I have with the exclamation mark, right? 
and then to edit commands and things like that you have to go to the you have to go to the commands tab right up here click that and then here's all my commands right now the important thing is you're gonna right click on it and then edit and for this chat window back here to pick up the command you have to make sure this is unticked ignore internal messages because it will look like this sometimes when you first implement the command but if you use the streamer bot chat uncheck that and it that command will be available to you in the chat in, in this chat particular chat window and i have it set so it broadcasts to both twitch and youtube thank you all for being here please be kind to yourself be kind to others and i will see you all on monday bye